if you're watching today and you're looking at how can I reach that audience, well, there's Facebook, there's Pinterest, which is hugely popular. As a matter of fact, it's amazing to watch the people in my network on Facebook who are women who on Facebook talk about their Pinterest boards. And hard. they put links to their Pinterest boards. So everybody wants to, in our industry, people want to talk about social media. and They want to talk about, well, our Twitter following and this and that. I don't see a whole lot of moms who are managing households on Twitter. They're on Pinterest and they're on Facebook and they're networking. And one of the biggest things they're asking is, hey, I'm new to town or has anybody used so-and-so or can anybody recommend a good dentist, a good mechanic, a good pediatrician? And I would agree with you. I think the, the woman should be the number one target in our marketing when we're wa looking to market our practices. Hey, Andy, do you have that picture I emailed to you over the weekend? Can you throw that up? You haven't seen this. You'll have to peek at the monitor. But uh, I if Andy can put it up so you can see it as well. This was something that I pulled off of Facebook from one of our clients. Uh -huh. And it says, which smile would you pick? I can help you improve your smile. And it is one of our clients that put it up. I wish I could take credit for this uh, being my idea, but it wasn't. And I, I'm sure Dr. Gary's watching right now. So kudos to you for doing it. The only thing I would potentially change about that is I think I put some normal smiles in there, maybe even some hideous smiles. Yeah. <laughs> so we can contrast because, right. you know, I want people to be looking at that going, well, this one is mine right here. And this one over here is what I would like it to be. But I thought that was a fabulous, fabulous piece that uh, hopefully will drive some results for him. I, I have no idea if it will or won't, but it was an interesting piece that I really enjoyed that was on Facebook, obviously. And, you know, the challenge I see with Facebook, and I just put a blog post up on this last week, was I read an article in the Wall Street Journal um, la sometime last week, I forget when it was published, that Facebook now for business pages is limiting your reach, mm -hmm. even to your own fans. So you could have a thousand people that have liked your Facebook page and only some percentage of them will see you in their news feed, which I found to be just amazing. Right. And they're doing it because they want you to buy the advertising That's to right. send it out to everybody. And what's interesting to me about that is I don't think most of the doctors understand that. And I know a few doctors at least that that is their go to marketing strategy sure. now. They, they've shifted from whatever traditional method they've used in the past to now I'm, I'm focused on Facebook. And I don't think they realize that their scope of influence is being limited because they just assume it's the panacea. Well, and, and I think that speaks to a broader context of marketing is we can't just put all of our eggs in one basket or one medium. So we've worked with organizations who are smaller in nature who say, hey, we have a website and we've done some SEO, some search engine optimization. That should be good enough. You really want to understand there are multiple ways to collect information. Sometimes the traditional, the postcard, the direct mail piece is still not a bad medium so long as you integrate it with a Facebook or other kind of social media such as a Pinterest. If you can start to really surround that target person or that target audience with the right communication and with the right content, either direct mail, web, social. Now you're, you're kind of encapsulating them into the messages that they need to hear, and you're actually walking them through and delivering the right content as they're making their buying selection process. And let's be honest, unless you're in a very small town and you're the only dentist, there are a lot of choices out there, so it's even more incumbent upon you and necessary to message directly to them in a variety of ways, because that's how we view and collect and and determine our buying process. Well, and I thought you made a profound statement earlier that the, the people now are on Facebook or Pinterest looking for a referral. Yes. So what's fascinating to me is still with all of this stuff, they're still looking for a referral. Right. It's not like they're just looking for an ad and then they're going to see an ad and most likely go there. I, and obviously that does work sometimes. Sure. I don't know what the percentage is, but there's some percentage of the time that that is the, fu the function of how they find somebody. But I know myself, I, as I often have said to everybody out there, I have three or four attorneys that I've, I've worked with over the years right. and still have for various purposes. And every single one of them, I, I got by a referral. Yep. And, you know, as I'm out talking to someone like you or someone else or, or Wally, someone will mention an attorney or some other professional that I should I should use. It gets registered in the back of my mind. And then when that need comes around again, the first thing I do is pull out my phone uh -huh. and look them up. Yeah. But it's still a referral business. And I think that the doctors need to all understand that, that the basis of their marketing plan still needs to be referral. It's just a method of now, how are we going to communicate that? Are we going to communicate it via Pinterest, postcard, Facebook? 
newspaper ad, radio ad, uh, all of them can be appropriate. It's just a matter of, of the message we're sending out. And I think that's the key, is the message. Uh, absolutely. The key is the message. It's the content. And again, it all gets back to, and it starts with that consumer, that buyer.